Tennessee's new abortion ban. West Virginia's sweeping abortion ban. It's happening all around us. South Carolina. Florida. Texas. Kentucky. Mississippi. Women facing the death penalty for having an abortion. MAGA Republicans in Richmond want Virginia to be next. I would support a 100% ban. Defunding Planned Parenthood. A total abortion ban. No exceptions. Women and doctors in jail. You don't have to look far to know where MAGA Republicans want to take Virginia. Just look what's happening around us. My guest today is Dan Helmer, a Democratic member of the Virginia House of Delegates, an Army vet and a good friend. I wanted to get Dan on the show because Virginia is shaping up to be our next battleground. We just came off an epic win for democracy here in Ohio with the defeat of issue one. I've covered that quite a bit on this show, but in Virginia, the stakes are just as significant. Dan, tell us about the coming battle over reproductive rights in your home state. Ken, first of all, we were just so excited to see what happened in Ohio. Ohioans took a huge stand for democracy, and we have a chance to do that this November here in Virginia. Every single seat in the Virginia Senate and the Virginia House of Delegates is up this November. And at stake is whether we join the rest of the South in passing onerous abortion bans. We are the only Southern state that has not passed a ban on abortion. And whether we flip the three seats in the House that we need to win back the House, whether we hang on to the Senate will determine whether 4 million women in Virginia and the 36 million women in the South who rely on Virginia as the last safe haven for abortion rights are able to still have access to safe and legal abortion after this November. Say that again. Virginia is the last safe haven for women in the South. I I am going back to that because I, I just had this incredible revelation with a previous guest that all almost all of the states of the Confederacy, depending on how things go in the next two cycles, might revert to Republican control, which says a lot about today's Republican Party. And Virginia is, at least in the Senate, holding the line. It is not a red state. I, I want you to make that case for us, and you can win there, right? It's absolutely not a red state. In fact, I sit in a seat that was held up until I won it by Republicans. I unseated a 17-year incumbent in 2019. We have a strong slate of candidates running across Virginia. We have 61 seats that President Biden won out of the 100 seats in our House. And so we just have to flip three of those 13 seats that we don't have today in order to get there. We know when we ask Virginians, do you support democracy? Because Democrats support democracy at a time that MAGA Republicans support insurrectionists. They say yes. Virginians are against book banning. They're against creating divisions between teachers and parents, and they support the ability of women to make their own reproductive health care decisions. This is a blue state. We know it. We just have to make sure we're out there making the argument and bring all of that national focus on a key race that will set the stage for what happens in 2024 and protect access to safe and legal abortion in the last southern state that hasn't passed onerous restrictions. Give us a sense of what the Republican Party in Virginia is up to. What are they thinking about in terms of abortion restrictions? Uh, This is intentionally provocative because there is some leaked audio out there that is really terrifying. It it is really terrifying. One of their candidates, uh, his name is Stirrup, uh, told somebody on tape that they support 100 percent total ban on abortion. The fallout after the Washington Post obtained audio showing Republican delegate candidate John Stirrup telling people he supports a total ban on abortion. Rich Marr is a professor of political science at Randolph-Macon College. This is uh, a big disaster for the Republicans, uh, not just in that district, but across the state. We saw one of the delegates this year introduce a ban on abortion that would have restricted some forms of contraception, even contained no exceptions for rape, no exceptions for incest, no exceptions for life or health of the mother. The current Speaker of the House 
has voted to criminalize and restrict abortion access over 40 times in his career. That is the Republican leadership. And our MAGA governor, Glenn Youngkin, has said that he would sign any bill that crosses that's not any bill that protects women's health, that protects women, that has exceptions for rape or incest or life of the mother, any bill. That is the extreme threat we face here in Virginia. We have seen the bills they would introduce. We know what would be there. They voted against a constitutional amendment that would have protected Roe v. Wade-like protections in Virginia. And so we know what is on the line. They have said it openly. We've seen it in other states. We just have to hear with our ears and see with our eyes what they are actually saying they would do rather than hoping that they would be more moderate than what they've said and what they've done. Governor Yunkin is not a kindler, gentler Republican. As a Virginian, can you pull off the curtain on who Governor Yunkin is? Because I think there are a lot of people out there who don't realize that if if he indeed is waiting in the wings for the presidential nomination, that's not a great thing. He is, well, he's not even a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a wolf in wolf's clothing. Tell us as a Virginian your opinion of Glenn Youngkin. Let me, let me tell you what is really happening here. When Glenn Youngkin ran for governor, he said he was going to take on CRT in the classrooms. And the Republicans introduced a bill about what they call divisive concepts. Virginia Democrats introduced a number of amendments to the bill. We said, okay, maybe there are some things we shouldn't teach in the classroom. But teaching the history of slavery in this country, the lack of understanding of it means that you can't understand the progress we've made. You can't be a proud patriot. You can teach that in the classroom and it's not a divisive concept. And every single MAGA Republican in the House who was present on the floor voted against it. We said teaching about the little girl Ruby Bridges who in third grade, many, many students get to read a, a book about her bravery. Little girl, civil rights icon, teaching about her, not a divisive concept. They voted it down. Said, oh, how about teaching about the imbalance of women and men in American politics? Pure demographics, that there are still many barriers to women serving in elected office. They voted that down. We said, okay, how about science? Is science a divisive concept? And they voted that down too. So one is you got to understand how this governor got elected by taking these incredibly divisive ideas and trying to mainstream them. So that's the first thing to understand. The second thing to understand is that they sought to defund our schools under them to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes by accident even. And at the same time, they've introduced so much that gets in the way of our efforts to reduce costs and make sure that Virginia is affordable for working families while introducing onerous bans on abortion. This is what we're facing against a governor who is also working hand in hand with Republicans to change voting laws in Virginia to try to stack the deck because now Virginian Democrats vote early, they vote by mail, and they have already placed bills in the hopper that would end all of that and try to shift this state in order to help Glenn Youngkin, in order to help a Republican nominee by getting rid of early voting, absentee voting, the list we've created for automatic enroll, you know, automatic uh, voter registration and voter, oh, sorry, automatic vote by mail. They try to get rid of, they're trying to get rid of all of that to try to swing Virginia, not by getting more votes, but by trying to cook the books against Democratic voters. We all have busy lives these days and can't afford to waste a day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before. Zbiotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, drink responsibly, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best the next day. The first time I tried Zbiotics was at a wedding. As instructed, I drank a bottle before any alcohol. I was amazed at how good I felt the next day. 
Every time I have a Zeobiotics before drinking, it makes such a difference the next day. Even after drinks the night before, I know I'll be able to get back to my daily routine like working out or mowing the lawn with ease. Labor Day weekend is right around the corner, so make sure you stock up before the long weekend. Your friends and family will thank you. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash boats to get 15% off your first order when you use boats at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash boats and use the code boats at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. Democrats in the Virginia House of Delegates are doing their best to hold the line uh, on, on protecting democracy, being thwarted at every turn by Republicans. You proposed a bill to bar the January 6th insurrectionists from holding public office in Virginia. And if uh, I'm not mistaken, every single MAGA Republican voted against it. And before you answer, I want to I want to remind people of the constitutional implications of this from the this is my uh, law school nerd coming out from the 14th Amendment. No person shall hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who, having previously taken an oath to support the Constitution, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Tell me about your experience trying to restrict insurrectionists from holding office in Virginia. Yeah, I think it's very simple. You and I both served in the military. We believe in being proud patriots. Being a patriot means you stand up, you swear an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. And the people who attacked us on January 6th tried to stop the peaceful transfer of power. There is nothing more heinous than that. And it should be something that we can bring Republicans and Democrats together to agree over. And I frankly, I think if you ask most Republicans, do you think insurrectionists ought to hold office? They would say no to that too. So the fact that a the MAGA Republicans that serve in Virginia are so extreme that they weren't willing to take up and vote for a bill that says we can all agree that armed insurrection against our country is a bad thing is pretty heinous and gives you a sense of the book banning, the abortion bans, and the anti-democracy acts that they stand ready to take. I haven't asked you about book bans. You've mentioned it a couple of times. Give us an update on that. We've covered that here as well. And one of the things that used to be a common theme in our politics was that when when people were called out, when their extremism was exposed, there was some sense of shame. That doesn't seem to operate on the right anymore. It is a, a, a shameless approach to politics that I'm not sure Democrats know how to deal with, because as as exposed as Moms for Liberty has, has become, as their ties to big money has been revealed, they don't seem to care, and they're on the march in places like Virginia. We have a local school board in Virginia that just said it's going to use a Moms for Liberty site in order to determine which books it should ban from its library. This is encouraged, supported, and pushed by the MAGA Republicans who serve in the Virginia House and the Virginia Senate, and in encouraged and enabled by our MAGA governor. We're gonna fight back. We're not gonna become like Tennessee, where school board, where, where local districts ban the teaching of Mouse, a book about the Holocaust. I mean, it's just not who we are as a country, not who we should be here in Virginia. And it's what it's at stake in the elections this November. Remember for everybody, I mean, this November in Virginia is going to determine our momentum going into 2024. And should we lose, could allow Republicans to cook the books, to flip Virginia's 13 electoral votes to the other side of the aisle without ever gaining an additional vote. We can't let that happen. All right. Tell us about your role in the Democratic caucus, uh, what kind of help you need and bring us home. I am uh, our campaign chair. I'm vice chair for outreach for the House Democratic caucus. My job is to have conversations like the one we're having today, Ken, and make sure that all over Virginia and all over the country, everyone knows what is at stake here. So proud to be standing with my colleagues to make sure we get back in the majority. We are up against 
a multi hundreds of millionaire who every week seems to get a million dollar donation from limited liability corporations from which we can't see the beneficial owner is getting donations from Harlan Crow, the collector of Nazi memorabilia, who is giving gifts to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. All sorts of dark money flowing into our state, plus the personal coffers to fund millions of dollars. So my ask of everybody who's listening to your podcast today or watching with us is to go to secureprogress.org. That's S-E-C-U-R-E-P-R-O-G-R-E-S-S dot org. Go there. Give us some help. Give us a little money. We can take this on with people power. If you can, volunteer for one of our incredible campaigns, make phone calls, uh, come out and knock on our districts. We have an incredible opportunity. We only need to flip three seats. And it's with the help of folks here in Virginia and all over the country that we can do that. Well, Dan, great talking to you. Keep up the good fight. Let's, uh, let's catch up again soon. Thank you, Ken. It was great seeing you.